Welcome to the show. How would you, do you play pranks? How about a senior prank? If you play, if you did a senior prank during your last day of school, you better watch out because that can lead to you canceling school and landing you in jail. That's exactly what happened at Frisco Memorial High. What was a senior prank turned out to be vandalism. This was eight days ago, so let's take a look. Damage and shutting down school for the rest of the week at Memorial High School in Frisco. Frisco ISD says the senior prank traditionally is typically supervised by staff members, but police and fire were called when it got out of hand. Fox Sports' Lynn Ann Wynn spoke with students and parents. She's at Memorial High tonight. Lynn Ann. Steve, we're told dozens of students were involved. Frisco police are now investigating, and some of those students could now face criminal charges. A senior tradition spiraling out of control Wednesday night. Memorial High School parents like Teresa Mabry woke up to videos and pictures showing the damage to the school circulating on social media. There's quite a bit of damage to the school. Um, the school's going to have to be cleaned completely from top to bottom. There, there's thousands of dollars worth of damages. Mabry's daughter did not participate, but we're told the annual senior prank is typically harmless fun that is supervised by staff members. According to district officials, this year's prank was simply supposed to involve sticking post-it notes around the school. But a small group of students ended up vandalizing the campus. It was another level of embarrassment for me because I was expecting just to go to school the next day, like, and sticky notes be everywhere. Pictures and screenshots from video taken inside the school show chemicals from fire extinguishers filling the air, paper and debris everywhere, and the school trashed. Because of the extent of the damage, including paint on the walls and fire extinguishers deployed, the district canceled classes for the last two days of school. An abrupt end to the class of 2022's senior year. I canceled school because of everything that happened and now I don't get to see those teachers that were like a big part of my life and it's just it's it's not funny it's not cool it's it's just it's sad no one was injured police and the district are warning there could be criminal and financial consequences school administrators told parents in a letter Campus and district staff are working with police to identify all individuals involved in the vandalism. Disciplinary measures will be enforced, and Frisco ISD intends to prosecute those responsible to the fullest extent of the law. Frisco ISD will hold the students responsible for costs associated with the cleanup. And graduation ceremonies are scheduled for tomorrow night. The district says that they are still moving forward with those ceremonies. The investigation into students involved, meanwhile, still ongoing. Which is good. I hope that they understand this isn't a prank. Unlike this one, a story we're telling. Watch this short clip. Last night at Memorial High School in Frisco, Texas, this viral video of what appears to be a senior sticky note prank gone wild quickly escalated to multiple fire extinguishers being deployed and physical vandalism in what the school district is describing as thousands of dollars of damage and causing the last two days of classes before summer break to be canceled. So I stopped by today to shine a light on the story not being told. Because what looked like this less than 24 hours ago was already on a path to becoming spotless. While State Representative Jared Patterson uses this vandalism as another opportunity to score political points and rally rage against the school board, instead of holding the students and parents personally accountable, I wanted to highlight the good women and men spending the weekend cleaning and sanitizing the school. I personally thank the crew for their time and detail. What ha appears to have started as a simple prank quickly escalated out of control, causing these students to learn this lesson the hard and expensive way. <laughs> wow. I guess that is a short clip. And it's really about There are other senior pranks. Like this one. At St. Martin, it got out of hand in Mississippi. 
Pictures of damage have been taken in social media over the weekend, and while the mess is supervised by many people, Skyrock is a damage about to $500,000. But surveillance cameras and identified the students were damaged was done. So, St. Martin High School will graduate with 350 seniors Monday night. Okay. Dead shark hung from the ceiling of Florida High School. Is a senior prank gone too far? What does the police say? This happened in Ponte Verde Beach, Florida. Senior pranks have come in high schools this time of year, but police say what may have been a senior prank with Florida went too far. A dead shark was found hanging over a stairwell at the uh, Ponte Verde High School. Her mascot is a shark. But the, the software said she only saw a shark and couldn't believe it. The school gave surveillance video to share as well at least a video publicly because it could impede the investigation. Any students found involved will be case face suspension or even expulsion. Criminal charges are also possible. Students sharing pictures of social media saying it was a senior prank, but there could be some major consequences. Like all these senior pranks, prank pranks, pranks used to be fun, but now they're supervised. And in future references, and probably in future videos, we will show we will show a clip of a senior prank that happened in 2010. I could not show it to you because it's copyrighted. I'm talking about what happened. Now this was a uh, this was on a uh, 2020s uh, 2020s uh, video on uh, classroom confidential on senior pranks. That's in the near future. Well, coming up next, the latest on the Uvendale shooting in Hobbs Elementary. What we're learning more about the shooter from the home. This and now, and then we're going to also look at the timeline that happened during that time and why it took police 40 to 60 minutes to get there and have Border Patrol involved. This was a theory from a friend of mine. We'll be right back. Up front tonight, more details into the Hobbs Elementary School shooting that happened three days ago. Now, for the past three days to four days, past three days, we've been looking into this shooting, looking into this case. If you want to recap, just visit the Give Me a Break special and along with, just visit Give Me a Break Tuesday, Give Me a Break Wednesday, and Give Me a Break Wednesday for the very latest. Now, here is the very latest from Inside Edition. Yesterday, yesterday Inside Edition look, take, took a look at the blood-soaked blood home. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the blood soaked home. It's the home of the crazed shooter who carried out the elementary school massacre. And it's also where he shot his first victim, his own grandmother. She is in stable condition today. There's blood all over. Oh my gosh, it's all the way up here. The killer's grandfather showed reporter Ali Bradley the disturbing scene. There was a pool of blood here. Really? We are now seeing the killer's last selfie and his chilling final message. I'm a go shoot up at elementary school right now. Salvador Ramos sent the warning to a 15 year old German girl who goes by the screen name Cece. He met her just two weeks ago on a little known social network app for teens based in France called Ubo. Ubo? Referring to his grandmother, he wrote, I'm going to do something to her right now. She's on the phone with AT&T about my phone. It's annoying. <laughs> Six minutes later, he messaged, I just shot my grandma in the head. The German girl is speaking out today, telling the New York Times, maybe I could have changed the outcome. I just could never guess that he'd actually do this. Ramos worked at the drive through window of this Wendy's and told co-workers he was saving to buy guns. He was rude, creepy, and scruffy, says a former co-worker. He bought a top-of-the-line version of the AR-15 as seen in these YouTube videos. Ramos legally purchased it online. The receipt shows he paid $2,024.28. He also bought a handgun, ammo, and body armor. Former FBI mass shooting expert Catherine Schweit says Ramos might have been stopped if warning signs had been reported. One of the more telling things for me is that some of the people who are coming forward and saying, I saw this with him, I saw this change in his behavior, I saw him start to spend more time with guns. We can gather a lot of information about this young man now, but it would have been nice if we gathered it before he started shooting. 
The whole nation is grappling with grief. CBS Morning's co-anchor Tony DeCopo struggled to keep his emotions in check. Uh, Avery uh, was a, uh, an honor roll student. It's just really hard here. And we're all going to pack up. And eventually we'll go home. Uh, but this community is going to be living with this forever. Jimmy Kimmel fought back tears. There have been 27 school shootings so far this year in this country, and it's May. <laughs> How does this make sense? It doesn't make sense. Like I said before, all these shootings are caused by what you see behind me. You see that right behind me? All these things right here? Video games. Do I have to show Rob? Do I have to show, show you that Rob clip again? Because let me tell you something. I will, and you, and it may not be. It may not be happy. But the real question is: Did law enforcement wait too long to enter the school? And why did it take them forty minutes to an hour to wait? Now, a friend of mine suggested that the border patrol was involved. Well, why would Border Patrol be involved? I mean, Border Patrol is just someone who just watches the border. Who would want to get border who would want to get border control involved and say, we need backup. All our officers are with the families. So we we were counting on border we're counting on border patrol. But that's the question I have. So how long did they did they wait too long? And like I said before, we're still investigating this shooting as it unfolds with new details and new details and suspects and cooks in this case, like my previous investigations. Taylor. Did they wait too long? There's growing controversy today over what some parents say was a delay in taking down the elementary school shooter. <laughs> Video shows angry confrontations between the frantic parents and police. The cops ain't doing but standing outside. One dad on the scene was quoted as saying, let's just rush in because the cops aren't doing anything like they're supposed to. It took 40 to 60 minutes before the gunman was shot to death. Ever since the Columbine High School massacre 22 years ago, law enforcement tactics call for police to immediately confront school shooters and do what they can to kill them before they can open fire on defenseless students. That apparently didn't happen here. Police defended their actions today. They don't make entry initially because of the gunfire they're receiving. But we have officers calling for additional resources. Everybody that's in the area, tactical teams, we need equipment. We need specialty equipment. We need body armor. We need precision riflemen, negotiators. They say after an hour, Border Patrol tactical teams arrive. They make entry, shoot and kill the suspect. But the news conference left many unanswered questions. This department seems to be struggling to get a basic chronology of what happened. There's no question many officers showed extraordinary bravery. A bullet actually grazed the cap of the Border Patrol agent who took down the shooter. Heartbreak continues in the small town of Uvalde, Texas. I spoke to Adolfo Cruz, whose 10-year-old granddaughter, Eliana, was killed. Every time that, you know, that I would run into her, she'd run up to me, hug me, kiss me. Angel Garza, who lost his daughter, Amory Jo, broke down as he was interviewed by Anderson Cooper. One little girl was just, just covered in blood, head to toe. Like, I thought she was injured. I asked her what was wrong. And she says she's okay. She was hysterical, saying that they shot her best friend, that they killed her best friend, and she's not breathing. And then she was trying to call the cops. And I asked the little girl the name, and she's... <laughs> and she told me, and she said, Amory. That's how you learn. As this broken community grieves and begins the healing process, they started here at the county fairgrounds with a solemn prayer vigil showing their solidarity and support. There were tears and hugs, and candles were lit in honor of the 19 children and two teachers slain. Ten-year-old Katerina Roque was in the classroom that day, but went home because she was tired, ten minutes before the shooter stormed in. Did you lose some friends yesterday? Yes. How many friends? Twelve. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And, and your teacher as well, yes? Yes. 
This haunting class photo taken earlier this year shows the utter decimation of the fourth grade class targeted by the gunman. Today, the fallen were memorialized in rows of crosses outside Robb Elementary School. Very sad to see. Very sad. When we come back, a timeline of, the, of that shooter. We're learning more details about this shooter. Then how much money will it cost to improve security in our schools? A look at one school who spent a, who spent a lot of money, like $400,000 to increase better security right after this. Still keeping up to date on Oxford, yesterday, the Detroit Free Press reported that Oxford High students walked out in support of the victims of the uh, shooting. Now, this was uh, this was on Thursday. 100 Oxford High School students walked out of class Thursday about lunchtime, filling the double doors to of the school to congregate at the football field. It's to, show, it's to show support of the students, faculty, and families coping with the massacre earlier this week in Robb Elementary, Uvalde, Texas. According to Ash Curry, declined to give her name. The students stood on the field for a few minutes, forming the shape of the letter U, exchanging hugs, and then fled back into the school building around 12.35. The spokeswoman for the district wrote in a statement that the district was made aware of a walkout plan at schools across the the country by students demand action, national advocacy organization against gun violence. But that person added that additional trauma specialists are available for students in this week and the days to come in Oxford as students hear from the news from Texas. Emily Bush, the parent of freshman students, says she was proud to watch her child participate. And Oxford had themselves a scene of the November 30 mass shooting, which killed four students and injured six others and a teacher. And according to Bridge, Michigan, they haven't passed bills to make schools safer even after the shooting. Like other shootings, they were met with, in, with inaction as producial effort by Senate Democrats on Wednesday to force a vote on law and still gun control measures, which was doomed from the start of Republican-led legislator. The next Monday, about six months since a deadly shooting at Oxford High School in Oakland County. Lawmakers convinced a tax force looks into the legislation that couldn't make schools safer, but is still winding down the legislative process. The final part expected in a few weeks will bring you up to date. Give me a continues in just a moment. Here's what we can tell you minute by minute about how the Uvalde shooting and the police response unfolded. The Texas Tribune posted a timeline and we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best to present you this timeline. But first, let's take a look at the new timeline. Then we're going to give you, the new, we're going to give you this timeline uh, from the uh, Tribune. Details by the take Texas look. DPS releasing today. The director of the Department of Public Safety speaking for about 40 minutes in Uvalde. KPRC 2 investigator Mario Diaz is live in the newsroom with a closer look at that timeline. Mario? Lauren, the new timeline starts at 11.27 a.m. with a teacher coincidentally leaving a door propped open at Rob. So here's what the new timeline said. 11.27, door, open, door propped open. 11.28, the shooter crashes a truck. 11.30 a.m., the first number one call hits, which was two minutes after he crashed the truck. The shooting outside begins after that number one call. And then after, and then 11.32, shots, of, shots in the parking lot and the officers arrived. Twelve fifteen, four attack members arrive. The same student calls number one after that. Suspect fires again. Officers move down the hallway. At 12.21. And at 12.50, which was... which was 31 minutes after the officers were down the highway, the door breached with keys, and at that time, the shooter was killed. So that's, that's that timeline happened. That's the timeline. Now let's look at the Texas Tribune timeline of what happened. Let's look back at September, let's look back at September 2021. In September 2021, the shooter asked his sister to buy a gun. Before turning 18, the shooter asked his sister to help buy him a gun. She said no. 
March 3rd, March 1st to the 3rd, which was two months before that mass shooting. The government has mentioned in Instagram about guns. On March 1st, the shooter discusses wanting to purchase a gun in a group channel on Instagram. In another Instagram channel on March 3rd, someone tells the shooter, word on the street, you're buying a gun. The shooter replies, just bought something right now. March 14th, the government makes an Instagram post. The government makes an Instagram post with the caption, 10 more days. Here's the comments, are you going to shoot up the school or something? The shooter replies, no, and stop asking dumb questions and you'll see. Investigators didn't specify what the, what the post consisted of. May 16th, which was two, month, two months after that post was made, May 16th, the shooter purchased a gun and ammunition. The shooter turns 18 at legal age for purchasing a rifle in Texas. On May 16th, the shooter then legally purchased two AR platform rifles from a local federal firearm license. On two days, May 17th and May 20th, he also buys th over 300 rounds of a 5.56 caliber ammunition. Now we turn to the day of the shooting, which was May 24th, about 11 a.m. Shooter sends a Facebook message, a pirate Facebook message to a girl in Germany he met online, which we heard about earlier, and tells about his plan to shoot the grandmother. The gunman shoots his grandma in the face, who then calls the police. The shooter steals his grandmother's vehicle and drives to his home elementary, a Robin Elementary, which is about a two mile driveway, not far from the house. Then at 11.28, he arrives at the school. Crashes the vehicle near a ditch in the school. Fires his gun at two male witnesses who begin approaching the crash from a nearby female home. Witnesses fleeing call 911. Two minutes after, a teacher calls 911. The shooter walks towards the school, climbs the fence to a parking lot, and shoots the school several times. A teacher at the elementary school makes 911 call reporting the crash and seeing the shooter, noticing he has a gun. A minute after that, the shooter walks through the school parking lot. The shooter recognized both vehicles in the, in the school park that finally traveled throughout. The police arrive at the funeral home. A school district police officer speeds in the direction of the person they think the man with the gun reported by the teacher, but drives past the gunman and heads to the back of the school, mistaking a teacher for a shooter. Okay. 11.33. Two, minute, two minutes after he walked in the parking lot, he enters the school through the back door, which the teacher had propped open. 100 rounds in the classroom is 111, 112, which are connected in two rooms. Two minutes later, the police enter the school. Later, former officers, including deputy with the Ivani County Sheriff's Office, enter the school. They rush to the same door where the gunman used to enter, which was closed. The enter received the grazing move from the gunman. They retreat. Two minutes later, the gunman fires 16 more rounds. Six minutes later, Robin Elementary Uvalde Police post, posted to Facebook. The announced on Facebook is under a lockdown stage due to gunshots in the area. Student staff stayed in the building, but was secure a lockdown stand as a school first the announcement. At the same time, the police posted to Facebook, watch police presence in the elementary. And then a minute later, they, they arrive outside. The, pol the police with the city of Uvalde and the local school district inside the school, they hear gunfire, are shot at, and move back to get closer. Then, minutes later, the more police arrive. More law enforcement officials arrive at the scene. Three minutes later, the onlooker starts filming from uh, Angel Lee Dezema. I can't pronounce that name. Almost ten minutes later, the police came to arrive and a student calls 911 from inside. That was two 911 calls. A student calls 911 from room 112 for a minute and then 23 seconds identifies herself. In a whisper, meanwhile, as many as 19 officers are positioned in the school's hallway. Seven minutes later, the student calls back. Again, it says multiple people are dead. Three minutes later, calls never warning again. Louise and I explained her comments during the call. Two minutes later, Border Patrol tackle units arrive. Border Patrol tackle unit members are carrying shields. A minute later, the 911 calls again, saying eight or nine students are alive. And then, a minute later, the school announces a shooter on campus. Another student calls 911 at 1219. 
21. Gunman fires again. 15 minutes later, a student in room 111 calls back. At 12.43, the gunman shoots the door. 12.46 and 12.47, I can hear the police next door. This was student call 911. Please send the police now. 12.50, three minutes later, the Border Patrol kills the gunman. Shots are heard of the student's call. Border Patrol tackling the officer breaches the room using the janitor's keys and kills the gunman. The children move out of the room at the same time. Then, 15 minutes, the police announce the shooter is in custody. The volunteer police announce Facebook will post shooters in custody. The authorities being announced the information later. Then, parent conferences happen. There are more details on this. And Texas, and they unveiled the timeline. But, we're not going to play that timeline because this is a half hour show. And I would use up a lot of space on my, on my camera. Which I'm not going to do. But if I had an extra camera, which would cost me like a, somewhere in between a cheap camera... I'd have to continue the show with another camera, which I would have to get a USB port to plug in the camera and then upload it to my to the other channel and then edit it, edit it together for a full hour. I don't have that kind of tool on me, but if I did, it would be a great idea. It'd be a perfect idea. Now parents are reunited and and two days later. The government holds, sex governor holds a press conference on Evaldi Elementary. And 21 members, and 21 members have been dead. But, but it's not over yet. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we're going to hear from Jimmy Kimmel. And from Chris Russo, Chris Russo. What did they say about the shooting? What does Jimmy Fallon have to say? And why he broke in tears? Why did they cut it, cut it off? More details on that tomorrow. When we come back, COVID-19. Well, it's official. We're over 5,000 deaths in the state. Along with over 10 deaths. 54 new cases. We're all we're like close to we're like over ninety four thousand new ones. Harris County is that is that the digit tests since the twentieth twelve percent still over six hundred thousand ICU over twenty three hundred people are in ICU hospitalized over twenty one thousand vaccination rate sixty two point six at least one dose twenty one point three seventy four point six percent. In the U.S. Five hundred six million. Two hundred twenty-one million fully vaccinated. Six point six seven point one percent of the population has been fully vaccinated. Now, how about our local schools? Well, since the last day of school, Florida Bluff, we don't probably don't know much because they're probably not going to update people for. Actually, they are. Since twenty-six. Zero. They forgot to add transportation on there, but zero. What could what could be from their first Memorial Day? We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen, but what we do know here's what we can tell you so far. But uh, a lot of things, it's like a lot of those 5,000 people that have gotten COVID and those people, 10 people that died in the state, they don't hit, they haven't got vaccinated. They probably died from the vaccine, but that's probably their choice. But who am I to blame and just put, point the finger at? But let me tell you right now, I've been telling you this for over two, I've been telling you this since for almost a year. I have been fully, I've been fully vaccinated. And let me tell you something. It has been like almost a year since I've gotten COVID free. But 
I am still waiting on the booster shot. I have to be, I have to wait until I, I'm like, like what, 50 or some? I gotta wait another 30 some years before I can get that vaccine. But again, like I've always said, we need to make sure vaccinated as we quarantine. It's the big one here. Many people think that, okay, I'm back in quarantine because I gotta go see my family. Visit your family virtually. Don't go anywhere because you may contract the virus. And like I've talked about before, things have got to change. Masks, very important. If you wear them one way, you could contract COVID. Up the nose, not down here, no down here. Social distance, six or more feet. Hand washing. Very important to wash your hands. Regular soap and water, 110 degrees in hot water. Sanitize your hands. You have to disinfect your wipes. Disinfect your area. If you're under two, no masks. If you're riding transportation, if it's the same thing. If you're not vaccinated, if you are vaccinated, you're in the optionary zone. But make sure you take extra precautions. Take a mask with you at all times. Put it in your pocket. Also, if you're quarantined, stay in the air. If you die, if you have COVID, stay for five days. That's the fifth day you test it again. But do not leave quarantine unless you go take out the trash or go check the mail. That's it. Also, if you're under two, no masks. If you have a medical condition, let them know beforehand and you're in, you're exempt. Also. If, if you're qualified, if your child, M1 is qualified to get the vaccine, if you don't know which one to choose, I'd recommend getting the Pfizer vaccine. I'm the one who got it two times, and I'm feeling A-OK. -okay. Let's try to be safe so that we may see a light. We may see a light in this. As I said, tomorrow night, we're going to look more into the shooting. And look more into the shooting and why the NRA held a press conference in days after the massacre. And why Texas school rampage renews a push for red flag laws. Plus the wrong decision to delay to confront a gunman. This isn't over yet. A lot of people in the state are still leaving. A lot of schools are walking out. And we're also going to, we were going to take a look at that security thing, but we didn't, we didn't have, we're not going to have time to do that, but we'll have that for you tomorrow. So look for all those stories on Give Me a Break Saturday. That's all for this edition of Give Me a Break Friday. We'll see you again tomorrow for Give Me a Break Saturday. And for all of us here at YouTube. And Give Me a Break.